The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Thursday, May 11, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comments section below. New York Mets vs Cincinnati Reds. The Mets continue a downward spiral, going 1-6 over their last seven games following their loss to Cincinnati in the series opener. Pitching has been a problem, noted by the 4.82 team ERA, which ranks 23rd in the game. Through their first 36 games they had struck out 298 batters, one of just nine teams yet to reach 300 KS. The Mets have gotten five quality starts this season, tied for lowest in baseball, and Senga has been responsible for two of those. The right-hander had arguably his best outing last Friday, tossing six scoreless, while allowing two hits and striking out four. He did, however, walk four batters for the fourth straight game and has given up 22 free passes on the year. The Reds still seem unsure of themselves. They had gone 2-1 entering Wednesday night's matchup but were also 3-5 in the eight prior games. Their offense is middle of the pack, sitting 15th with a team batting average of .247 through 35 games. They have struck out 316 times in that span, tied for 14th most overall, and their 151 runs tied for 7th fewest. Center fielder TJ Friedel went 2-4-4 with two RBIs and two runs in helping the Reds to a series opening win. In seven May games he is hitting .417 with seven RBIs and 1.190 ops. Both of these teams have not been kind to wallets thus far this season. I'm not sure we are watching the Mets' annual death spiral just yet, but things are getting ugly once again for them. The red hitters have been strong recently, and that is what we will be writing here, with due respect to Mr. Senga and the decent rookie run he has had thus far. The Mets' offense has disappeared, and their pitching is bad news, especially once the bullpen gets involved. New York's only win over their last seven games was 1-0 over Colorado. Sometimes, teams are in a bad place and that's just the Mets right now. We all know it well. Take Cincinnati on the money line. I would expect some runs in this one. The over has hit firmly in their last two meetings prior to Tuesday night. There is also the matter of it being Lively's first MLB outing since 2019 and first with the actual team that drafted him. Senga may have a couple of quality starts for the Mets, but far from all of his starts have been, and Reds hitters like Friedland and Jonathan India are swinging hot bats right now. The Mets starter does carry 1.47 whip into this game, so that will help out cause. Together, these teams have seen 35 of their games hit the over this season. Take the over 9.5 runs. San Diego Padres vs Minnesota Twins. The Padres played well over the past week, and they've won three of their last five games. They will try to keep the momentum going with another win over the Twins, which will give them their fourth win in their last six games, and the series win. San Diego is averaging 4.19 runs per game. Their .234 batting average is 23rd in the league. Their .321 on base percentage is 16th, as is their .396 slugging percentage. Xander Bogarts leads the Padres with a .273 batting average and six home runs, while Matt Carpenter leads the team with 17 RBI. San Diego's pitching has been good, with the team giving up 4.17 runs per game. Opponents have a .237 batting average against the Padres, which is 8th in the league. Their 4.03 ERA is 12th, while their 1.29 whip is 14th. In his last start, Darvish gave up 4 hits and 2 runs in 6.2 innings, leading to a 5-2 win over the Dodgers. They will need a similar effort from him if they want to win this game. The Twins have lost 3 of their last 5 games, but they've won 6 of their last 9 home games. They are playing well offensively at home, scoring 19 runs in their last four home games. They will continue playing well offensively in this game because Darvish has struggled in recent starts, giving up six runs in his last two starts. He also struggled in recent starts against the Twins, giving up seven runs in his last three starts against them and will have a hard time slowing them down in this game. The Padres have won three of their last five games, but they split their last four road games. They are playing well offensively, scoring 13 runs in their last three road games. But, they won't score a lot of runs in this game because they have struggled against right-handers this season, and Ober has been great on the mound so far, giving up two runs in three starts. He gave up two runs in two home starts and won't have trouble keeping their offense in check, so go with Minnesota to cover the money line. The Twins followed up their two-game winning streak by losing their last three games. 
They will try to put an end to their streak with a win over the Padres, which will give them their third win in their last six games. Minnesota is averaging 4.25 runs per game. Their .219 batting average is 30th in the league. Their .300 on base percentage is 28th, while their .385 slugging percentage is 22nd. Byron Buxton has been the most consistent batter for the Twins. He leads the team with a .233 batting average, 8 home runs, and 19 RBI. Minnesota's pitching has been good, with the team giving up 3.92 runs per game. Opponents have a .221 batting average against the Twins, which is second in the league. Their 3.35 ERA is third, while their 1.14 whip is second. In his last start, Ober gave up three hits and no runs in seven innings, leading to a 2-0 win over Cleveland. They will need a similar effort from him if they want to get the win. Our total pick is over. Chicago White Sox vs. Kansas City Royals. Victory over the Kansas City Royals at Rainey Kaufman Stadium on Tuesday evening. First baseman Andrew Vaughn's sixth inning two-run blast broke a 1-1 tie, and the White Sox bullpen shut down the Royals after the seventh inning to hold on for the win. Outfielder Luis Robert Jr. also went deep, and C.B. Zavala knocked in a run for Chicago. White Sox starter Lucas Ulito picked up the W by going six innings and allowing two earned runs on five hits while striking out nine. Three relievers allowed no hits over three innings for Chicago. The game was delayed for two hours due to inclement weather. Clevenger has won all five games he has started against Kansas City at Kauffman Stadium. He has compiled a 1.41 ERA with a 0.81 whip against the Royals on the road. The White Sox have won 18 of 29 games overall against the Royals over the past two seasons and batted a robust .273 against them last year. Their pitching staff had an overall 3.56 ERA versus the Royals in 2022 and limited Kansas City's offense to a .237 batting average during their matchups. The Royals' offense has struggled at home this season, ranking near the bottom of the league with a .234 batting average. Four White Sox pitchers limited KC to two runs and five hits in their most recent matchup with them. While the White Sox staff have performed below expectations this season, their team ERA is almost a point lower on the road than it is at guaranteed rate field. Kansas City has managed to win only four of 21 games played at Kauffman Stadium this season. Most signs point to a victory for the White Sox with Clevenger on the mound Thursday. Our team pick is White Sox plus 1.5 runs. The White Sox are ranked 13th in the league in runs scored per game, and their offense has been trending upward, averaging 8.67 runs per game in their last three contests. They have gone over the point total in five of their last seven games overall, and three of their last five on the road. The Royals are improving upon their early season hitting funk, averaging 6.33 runs per game in their last three. Kansas City or their opponent has scored eight or more runs in three of their last seven games. Both teams' pitching staffs rank near the bottom of the league in several key categories, including 28th and 29th in ERA. White Sox pitchers allow the second most home runs per nine innings in the majors, while Kansas City is ranked 26th. The first game of the current series between these two teams saw 17 runners cross home plate. Most signs and stats point to a higher scoring affair between Chicago and Kansas City on Thursday. Our total pick is over 8.5 runs. Tampa Bay Rays vs. New York Yankees. Tampa Bay has been the best team in the majors through the first month and a half, and they lead the majors in nearly every batting category. Entering this series with the Yankees, they have smacked the most home runs, lead the MLB in on-base percentage, and scored the most runs. Pitching has been just as good, holding the lowest staff ERA and whip, while allowing the fewest home runs and runs per game. Rasmussen has been a big part of that, and they are undoubtedly the best team in baseball up to this date. German started the outing on a tough note, yielding a hit to each of the first two batters he faced and giving up a pair of runs in the first inning. After that, he held Tampa's dominant lineup mostly in check, allowing just one more hit and no more runs. German did not get the offensive support he needed to pick up the win, but the late Yankees rally gave them the aforementioned win. The right-hander has given up two or fewer runs in four of his seven appearances this season, and overall he has a 4.35 ERA, 0.94 whip, and 44-12 KBB across 39.1 innings. Tampa Bay has been the most dynamic team in the majors through the first month and a half, and they lead the majors in nearly every batting category. Entering this series with the Yankees, they have smacked the most home runs, lead the MLB in on-base percentage, and scored the most runs. Drew Rasmussen gets another shot at a riddled Yankees lineup, and he will be able to navigate through the same lineup he fired 5.2 scoreless innings against. He will carry a rock-solid 3.11 ERA, 1.19 whip, and 40 11th KBB ratio across 37 and two-thirds innings into this rematch, and although Aaron Judge is back in the lineup, he will not face the bulk of the Yankees' injured club. 
Tampa comes in as a heavy favorite, so take them with some juice to win by two or more runs here. Our team pick is Tampa Bay Rays minus 1.5 runs. The Yankees will turn to right-hander Domingo German for the first game of this pivotal Al East series against the Rays. Last week, he allowed two runs on four hits and two walks, while striking out five batters over five innings. Both he and Rasmussen pitched an excellent game, and I expect the same type of game here in this rematch. German started the outing on a tough note, yielding a hit to each of the first two batters he faced and giving up a pair of runs in the first inning. After that, he held Tampa's dominant lineup mostly in check, allowing just one more hit and no more runs. This will be a low-scoring game dominated by both teams' starting pitchers, and I expect a 3-1 or 4-2 type of finish. Take the under. San Francisco Giants vs. Arizona Diamondbacks. It was a disappointing end to the homestand for the Giants, as they dropped their series finale with the Nationals 11-6 on Wednesday afternoon. San Francisco entered the game as a minus 155 betting favorite, while the 17 combined runs cleared the pregame total of 8.5 runs with ease. Sean Mania got torched in the starting role, allowing 8 runs, 4 earned, on 5 hits and 3 walks. He lasted just 2.2 innings before handing it over to the bullpen. Offensively, San Francisco recorded 8 hits, and most of them came after falling behind 10-1. The only notable offensive plays were home runs from Michael Conforto in the 8th and Lamont Wade Jr. in the 9th. This National League West showdown between the Giants and Diamondbacks should be a great game. The odds makers agree as they see San Francisco as just a minus 130 betting favorite, while Arizona comes back at plus 120. I'll go ahead and take a shot with the Diamondbacks as slight underdogs in this spot. This line is simply due to the name recognition that comes with Alex Cobb, along with his recent 7.0 inning outing, where he allowed no runs against the Brewers. While Cobb is a reliable arm, he has always been a guy who performs much better at home than on the road. In 2023, his ERA is 1.35 at home and 3.29 on the road, and those same numbers were 2.68 and 5.20 last year, respectively. Look for Cobb to struggle a bit in this one against a respectable Arizona offense. Let's lock in the snakes on the money line. Finally, the bullpens of each team have played critical roles in their pedestrian records up to this point. San Francisco brings in the 28th ranked arm barn in terms of ERA, 5.63, while Arizona is 25th, 4.70. As for whip, the two clubs are 28th, 1.49, and 21st, 1.31, respectively. Let's not overthink this one and lock in the over. Texas Rangers vs. Oakland Athletics. The Texas Rangers are 22-14 overall this season. They are currently in first place in the American League West Division. They hold a three-game lead over the Angels in the division. The Rangers have won four of their last five games entering Thursday night. In their latest game, Texas defeated Seattle 4-3 on Wednesday, May 10. Marcus Semien hit a home run to score the Rangers' first run in the game. Texas finished the game with 13 hits, as the Rangers allowed just seven hits. Dane Dunning was the starting pitcher in the game, as he allowed just six hits and two earned runs in the win. On Thursday, the Rangers will start Nathan Eovaldi. The right-handed pitcher has a record of 4-2 and an ERA of 3.22. He has seven starts this season and has pitched a total of 44.2 innings and has allowed 16 earned runs. In his last start, Eovaldi pitched eight innings and allowed just five hits and zero earned runs in a victory over the Angels. The Athletics are 8-30 this season. They are in last place in the American League West Division and they have the worst record in baseball. Oakland is the last team in the nation to reach double-figure wins. The Athletics have four straight games and are coming off of a series where they were swept against the Yankees. In their latest game, the Yankees defeated Oakland 11-3 on Wednesday, May 10. Jace Peterson, Carlos Perez and J.J. Blide all homered in the game, but it wouldn't be enough in the game. Kyle Muller pitched four innings and allowed six earned runs in a game that he was credited with a loss. The Rangers' offense has been flowing this year. They have been scoring runs at will and have been able to hit plenty of home runs. Oakland's pitching staff has been historically poor this season. As of Wednesday, they have not announced their starting pitcher, but it won't happen. Oakland loves surrendering runs from the starting spot to relieve pitchers giving up easy runs. The Rangers should jump all over this game and win easily. Take the Rangers to cover. The over will hit on Thursday because of the poor pitching and defense from the Athletics. They have allowed the most runs and show no sign of stopping that mark from continuing. In a combined 20 games, the over and under have split 10-10 between the two clubs. Take the over on Thursday.